Welcome back my YouTube friends out there. Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place and the thread about BMW reliability and talking about which cars really are reliable, which cars are not reliable. Today we're gonna do another check, another verification to see which cars really are reliable and, and more importantly, which ones are less reliable. So we're gonna head on down to the local BMW dealership and we're gonna snoop around and what we're going to do is really check to see what kind of cars are in the shop. Now, firstly, there's a lot of different ways you can verify overall reliability. Yeah, there's fairly reliable ways, reliable ways of checking that. JD Powers, you can check things like consumers reports, you can look at lemonade guidebooks, you can talk to friends and family who may own a BMW, maybe you own one and you've got your own kind of ideas to what type of drivetrain, what cars have consistently been good or bad for you. There's lots of ways to get that information as well as just general browse on the internet. Of course you want to check around on my channel, there's lots of information there on various types of reliability on these cars. But today we're really going to zip down to the dealer and look around. I'm going to show you which cars are a problem. Now of course a lot of these cars are going to be in there for standard servicing, oil service, tire changes, brakes, routine stuff of course. But there will be and there should be some level of consistency in terms of you will see a thread, I'm sure, if there's certain types of vehicles that are in there a little bit more than the others. I would think that there would be a bit of an indicator. We'll walk you through that and I'll point out some of the key cars that I find and that I notice and I'll kind of share some of the info that I know about them that, you know, what leads them to be a problem. So let's go take a look, guys. All right. X5s, seems to be a bunch of X5s. He looks like his tires changed because of the spares in the back. 550 GT, we have an E46 here, kind of old. Most people don't take these to the dealer anymore just because of the age. 328, no plates, probably a trade-in. Now this one here belongs in the service department. We all know what the reliability of the 7 Series is. That's a 750. We all talk about it. it's probably in here for a coolant leak. This car was extremely unreliable. It had a lot of electrical issues and whatnot. Tough car to keep. There's another X5, of course. X3. I see a lot of the SUVs. Another X3, X3. Old generation X5, of course. Lots of SUVs in this shop. So we have a new generation, 4 Series. New generation, 3 series, oh, look old M3, this one's an E36, I'm not sure what the Ford's doing here, must be lost, oh, what's this, some weird noise coming, it's not even running, well, what can you say, Honda, Hyundai, these must be trade-ins I would think, in some cases, and here we have a, an X5 with the 35. Now I've got a friend that actually has this exact same car. And he has had a lot of issues. They couldn't resolve it. Now it's that's the turbo in this car. He loves the way it drives. It's quick, it's fun, it's responsive. The problem is it's been in the shop a lot. And that seems to go consistently with a lot of the other X cars. A lot of problems are great when they're running. But when you have a lemon, look out. They're going to hurt you. So I don't know... His was a little bit of a problem. I haven't heard lately if he's got it sorted out, but he had a lot of issues with idling issues. The car would stall randomly and just overall drivability concerns with it. Power, yes, when it was good, it was awesome, but he had a lot of issues. Another X. So we have a 328. These are pretty generic though. It's probably in for standard servicing. We have an X5, another X5 here. We have an X6, no. This is, yeah, an X6. We have a GT here, 550. Then we have a 525, but this car looks a little bit rough. And then, you know, another 5, X, X5, X2. 
E90. This is an E90, that's a sedan. We have the 750. We know those are notoriously unreliable. Issues that have plagued the 7 Series for years. Moving right along, we have another 7 Series here. These are, again, the premium luxury cars, but they are notoriously unreliable. Then we move along, we see 328, M4, probably standard miscellaneous stuff. This car here looks pretty rough here. Here's an E92. We've got a, a coupe here. It's an E92. Look at the tires there. My goodness, right down to the threads. To the treads. This car has been driven hard, put away wet, I would say. Yeah, we've got a 435. See, there's not a lot of these here. 330. See, newer generation stuff here. Of course, we've got a 328. Newer generation. Good stuff. Again, probably standard servicing. These newer generations, you don't see a lot of issues in them yet. Newer Gen 435. Probably st standard servicing. This one's nice. It's a Grand Coupe. Actually, and then we have another 4 Series and another 430 here as well. Hard to say yet. Grand Coupe. This one's in. Not a manual. But who knows what the story is there. Wow. After walking through the service department here at the BMW dealer, it seems to be a bit of a common thread. So you see a little bit of everything here, I would say, which is pretty consistent with what you'd expect. But given the, the larger numbers of X cars I've seen here, lots of X5s, lots of X3s in the service department, that leads me to believe that there's more service-related problems with the X series of cars. Now, not only that, you have other issues. Obviously, there's a few of the newer cars, but that's not really a big indicator of the, like a 435 or a 240, because there was only a couple of them. So I would say, as a rule, it's probably in here for standard servicing for the most part. But definitely, there's a consistency with the X series of, of cars. The other thing, of course, is the 7 generation. Now, there's not a lot of them around in general, because they're a premium luxury sedan. And because they don't have a lot of them that even hit the road, it's surprising to see two of them here alone in the service department. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue here consistently with the 7 Series cars. We know that the, that generation, the latest is okay, but, but really these generations of 7 Series obviously have pretty substantial issues, as I mentioned before. And if you've seen some of the other videos, some of them are water, like coolant related issues and access. It's not so much that the, the, it's such a big problem, it's just the labor costs are huge on it because access on a lot of those cars like to get into some of the the hardware to change the water pumps or the coolant lines is very very difficult and it takes a lot of labor to get in there that's where the problem lies and of course because the cars are so complex with so many electronics that becomes a big problem there as well hugely expensive cars to run and it doesn't surprise me to see a couple of that 7 series in here so after spending about 20 minutes in the shop there or in the bays, I would say that it's pretty obvious to me that given cars like the 3 Series, 4 Series, X1s, those are low cost price point cars generally in the BMW world, and yet we didn't see a lot of those cars in the service area. The majority of the vehicles that we saw in for servicing happened to be you know, X3s, X5s. And to me, that's a bit of an indicator. Now, of course, a lot of times those are in there just for basic servicing and oil service and whatnot. But obviously, it's a pretty good indication that there are typically more issues related to those cars. And the other thing I noticed, given the relatively low production numbers of the 7 Series, the fact that we saw two of them in there, they are, themselves are not short on issues. The 7 Series have always been plagued with complex issues related to electrical problems. I know there have been coolant related issues back in the mid late 2000s. You know the later generations look to be a little better but they have always suffered from you know reliability issues because of the complexity associated with the 7 series cars. We didn't see many of the older cars which is pretty obvious why too. I think typically most people you know in the E90s now and older 
most of those people are either going to independent shops or servicing themselves which obviously because the lower cost a lot of times it's it's down third fourth fifth sets of ownership hands now so a lot of people tend to do that stuff themselves and forego the expensive service costs at the dealer but anyway either way all in all i would say the most obvious to me are the x cars and i hope you guys take that with a grain but that is to me the most the best indication as to the vehicles that you're going to expect out of the majority of the problems in the bmw world so thanks again everybody mark here signing out make sure you give it a thumbs up like share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel also hit that little notification bell gets you a quick notification that the next video is out don't forget to join the channel guys love to see you on the next one catch you then bye bye Choo.